I got my first prosthesis around a year or two after the amputations. Um, and it was really shockingly bad in a, in a way that, that, that I was, I, was I, I couldn't really, you know, understand how, how, this, is, how this was possible. That, that, this wasn't the information that I was getting before. It was like, oh, this is going to be great. You know, you're going to be able to do so much with it. And it's almost, it's going to be like you, you didn't even lose your hands. Well, that's not what it, what it was like. When you get a prosthesis like this, you are basically handed the device and are told, okay, well, now go use it. And you, as, a, as an individual, as the user of something that should replace your limb, uh, you have no control over, over customizing it or, or personalizing it. You're just given this device and like, go figure it out. Like if I get a phone and it costs a, a fortune and I can't like it's it's what it is and I can't change it, I, that I'd be I'd be furious. And here we have these limbs that that are supposed to be parts of our bodies and we can't really do anything with it. Uh, this was really really you know a shocking experience. I just couldn't place it. I, I couldn't understand it. My idea was, okay, how, how can we make these devices learn over time from us? Uh, the same way we learn from our mistakes. How can, how can a, a, a prosthesis learn from the ma mistakes it makes as well? And if we have enough of these signals, we have enough different places that we're reading these signals from, we can look for patterns, patterns of, of electrical activity. So we can tell that certain muscles are being uh, activated, certain muscles aren't. And if we teach this to a, an artificial intelligence, then that system can, can say, okay, this that I'm reading right now, this looks very much like what I was taught to be closing the hand. So I'm gonna say that this, per, this signal, um, the person that's generating the signal, they're trying to close their hand, so I'm gonna close the hand. Most of the people that do work in the field, they have all their limbs, which is great, because that's, that's not a bad thing, but from a, uh, uh, the standpoint of developing devices, it makes it difficult to understand a problem. Functionality isn't always the primary, uh, primary goal of, of people using these prosthetic devices. In fact, uh, one of the biggest issues that people have is how it looks. So the benefits of the hook are that it's functionally very, very good. The problem is that it looks like, uh, you know, something a, a pirate would have worn. Well, a high-tech pirate.
if the control, if the, if the sensory feedback gets good enough, industrial use, uh, research use, you know, going to, going to places where, where you wouldn't want to send a human, you'd want to send a robot, but you have to be very precise in how and what you do. You need to be able to, to, uh, to basically feel what that robot is feeling as closely as, uh, as possible. And you need to be able to control that robot as, as you would control yourself.